First question is from Dance Kid Dance. How do I fix hip shift? I'm always favoring my right side when I squat. Oh, the good old hip asymmetrical shift. shift huh? Yeah. You know, um, one of the best ways, just kind of basic, because there's a lot of techniques that I would employ to work on this with someone, and you know, it depends on what's causing the hip shift in a person for me to, to, to determine what exactly I would apply. Mm -hmm. But one general piece of advice I can give on the podcast that I think would help most people is to start doing uh, unilateral work, one-legged or mm -hmm. split stance work. And then the idea is to mimic, make sure both sides are mirror images of each other. That's a really big one. So what you want to do is you want to, let's say you do a, a standing lunge, which is a bit unilateral uh, or more so than a squat. Go down with your strong side, film it with your phone from the front and the side, and then try to be exactly the same with the other leg. It's kind of an easier way to, I'd say, more general way to, to address the yeah, differences. Yeah, and also take regressing it down quite a bit and like doing those exercises like bird dog and these things where we're, we're really just focusing where your hips start to rotate and like you're, you're losing that, that bracing uh, tension that you need the evenly distributed mm -hmm. and being able to anti-rotate. So uh, without getting too complicated, really just trying to keep the hips from moving at all and really like having that proper bracing in the core and, and connectivity in the hips to keep everything straight ahead. Uh, there's lots of exercises for that you can regress to to kind of stay uh, in there and, and really work on that. So th this is a little bit of a depends question, right? Because yeah. uh, everybody's yeah. going to be a little bit different. But I, I do want to share probably two of the most common things that I, I see when I when I see this in a client. Um, one of those being it's it, it tends to happen a lot when somebody had some sort of an injury on mm -hmm. one side, especially when it's a major one. They they broke an ankle, they tore an ACL, MCL in their knee, they had hip surgery on one side. And then during that time, uh, that side tends to atrophy, the other side tends to uh, overcompensate because you were injured on that side. And then when the rehab happens, a really good person that was rehabbing probably didn't do a good job of making sure that you started to catch everything back mm -hmm. up and were balanced. I see this a lot. Um, and so then what ends up happening is you have a very dominant side and then it's just the body's natural body will naturally go to that more dominant side. Like when you're in a deep squat, so you go down to squat and so let's just say like, uh, so I had knee surgery on my left side. Mm -hmm. So after that, it, when I would go to squat, my right side was much more dominant and stronger. So at the very bottom, I would have this shift to the right. It would, my, my right side that's stronger at the bottom would want to take over and then you would come out of it. So that's, yeah. that's one really, really common area that, and, and one of the best ways to address that is unilateral trading is to go back and do a lot of split stance stuff, one legged stuff and try and catch catch the legs regain up regain stability that's right regain st a lot of stability training that's going to be really good Sing and it could take a while yeah it does take a while mm -hmm. it takes a while to catch that up and you got to be okay with the the dominant side you know maybe getting a little weaker in while you try and catch the uh the weaker side back up and to try and level that out and unilateral training i think is really good for this now the second thing uh and this was really uh, i was way more enlightened by this after i met and started hanging out with dr brink so uh, those that don't know, the MAPS Prime Pro program was written with uh, Dr. Brink, and he was probably uh, a, a very, very crucial to all of our 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 mobility knowledge, our movement. Like he's just a, on another level as a movement specialist, and a good, very good friend of ours. And he, I'll never, I'll never forget the first time that I was in his office, and he had me take off my shoes, and he wanted just to watch me walk and squat and move, and. I, he broke down the shift and everything going on in my squad that time all the way down to my feet. So a lot of people have really weak feet and they tend to pronate and they typically do that one side more than the other. And if there's a breakdown in the foot and the foot you know, internally rotates or what they call flatten, your foot flattens more on one side, it'll bounce its way all the way up the kinetic chain until it gets to your hips. And what will happen is you shift the opposite direction, right? So that is really common is to look at your feet and, and get barefoot, squat down and pay attention to see if you notice one side is doing really, really common. And it was something that I just was not trained. We were trained as trainers early on to really kind of watch the hips and the knees more. Never the feet. Never the feet, right? Never. We were never yeah. really watching the feet, which explained a lot of the reason why this was broken down in myself. 
And boy, once I really started to work on my foot strength, my ankle mobility, and address how I was planted on the ground, it started to take away any sort of shift that I had in my hips. So those, those in my opinion, are the mm. two areas to, to really look at for the majority yeah, of people. And you know what the challenge is with this is that we can get really good at compensating. In fact, you could get so good at compensating- that You don't know. That to the average person, you may look balanced when you squat or lift because because you've gotten so good at this particular pattern. And then what ends up happening is when you try to correct this pattern, you have to back way off on the weight because you're better at lifting weights poorly than you are at lifting weights properly, okay? No different than if you you always typed with your two index fingers. The first time you go and practice typing the correct way, you're still going to be faster with your two index fingers. You're just better at doing it the wrong way. But over time, we know that the right way – Will get you, will get you better results. You'll be able to type much faster. The truth is uh, the same for the body. The absolute truth, because you are limited by the weakest link in the chain. So mm -hmm. what I mean by that is, if your if your squat has been stuck at you know X amount of weight or so many reps, what might be preventing you from progressing isn't your total genetic potential for strength. Often, actually, more often than not, it's not that. More often than not, what's stopping you is some kind of a mobility issue where your body just stops you from going any stronger or faster because there's something that's weak. This is why mobility is such, or mobility work can be so valuable mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Because you may think, oh, I, I feel balanced, I'm good, but you got all these plateaus. I've been stuck at you know 250 pound squat, I've been stuck at a you know 150 pound bench press or whatever forever. Uh, well, try this. Try working on mobility. Try following a program like Prime Pro, work on the major areas of your body, and spend the next two months making that a priority, two or three months making that a priority. And the good news is you don't need equipment to do this. You could practice this anywhere. You don't need a gym. And then go back to lifting, and then with your new mobility, your new connection, start to add weight. And then don't be surprised if your old plateau is shattered because you've now uh, fixed that weak link. And this is, this is something that's extremely, it's far more common than not.